can't see you there. Good evening, everybody. I was just doing some late reading, but I think it's time to continue our fully known series. And today I will be sharing with you how God gets it. Now, if you'd like to join me, let's get started. Hey guys, Seth Brewster here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the seventh grade life group leaders. Uh, shout out to my students, as well as Dave, Jonah, and Nick, my co-leaders. Um, as well as shout out to Quay San, because he is the grand poomba of junior high uh, ministry. Anyways, I'd also, uh, you guys also might know me from worship Sunday mornings, or occasionally I teach, uh, whether that be for junior high or senior high. Anyways, today I was asked to present you guys the next installment of the Fully Known series. And this one is about how God gets it. The title is God Gets It. And I'm going to show you in the Bible a couple of cases of how Jesus does relate to us. But anyways, uh, I say we dive in. What do you say? All right, let's dive in. So today we're going to be talking about how God gets it, right? And I know it'd be really easy for somebody to say, Seth, I understand that God came to earth as Jesus, but that doesn't mean he gets what it's like in my daily life. He doesn't understand the pain or the stress or the temptation that I go through. And I'm here to actually show you that that Jesus did actually go through everything that we go through. Wait, everything? 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 Okay, so maybe not everything. You know, Jesus probably didn't ever pop popcorn or definitely didn't play the keyboard but he was tempted he definitely felt pain and because of his stepping down from heaven onto earth in human skin he experienced these things and part of being human is these very things temptation and pain that they have been around since the beginning of the bible and genesis so when people have shared experiences they are able to relate to one another on a deeper level now, a great example of this is within my own life group with a bunch of other young men. Um, one of my best friends is dealing with depression and anxiety. And these two things are often very difficult for those who have not experienced them to understand. It's very difficult for people who have not experienced them to give help to those who are going through it. And however, as somebody who spent years dealing with these very issues myself, I'm able to go deep with him and help him through these times. Now, this example that I shared is both a testament to why we do life groups, right? So that way we are walking together towards Jesus with others that are our same age, going through some of the same things, so that way we can ultimately point them towards Jesus as we head towards Jesus. Secondly, this example that I just shared also helps prove my point that since Jesus was a man and went through these things, he is able to understand. He does get it. So let's take a look at Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, and that's going to give us a look into exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, can I have somebody out there um, volunteer to read this? Yeah, uh, you in the back. Yes, thank you. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted, as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help. In time of need. So are there any questions that you immediately think of when you see that? Yes, you. Um, Seth, uh, 
What's high priest? Right, I was hoping you would ask that question because that's immediately what comes to my mind when I read that passage, right? Jesus is our high priest. So what was a high priest? We need to understand what that is. The high priest was somebody in the Old Testament times that would present sacrifices on behalf of the nation to God. Now, this was daily, monthly, yearly even. Now, these sacrifices did not actually cover the sins, but what it did was reminded the people that they were sinful, right? The life of an animal reminded them that it should have been their life that was due for their sin. The penalty of sin is death. Now, Jesus is a high priest, right? Jesus stands before God bringing a sacrifice on our behalf. Just as a human high priest, he understands the temptation to sin, although he never did. As he goes to God, he understands what it is that we go through in that temptation. Now, an interesting point here is that Jesus is not only the high priest, but he is the sacrifice. His death on that cross was the sacrifice. Remember how I said that animal sacrifices did not actually cover the sins of the people? Well, it was Jesus' death that does extend both to them back in the past as well as ahead to us and actually covers our sins. Hebrews 10 says that the blood of bulls and goats was never meant to take away sin. Later on, it goes and says, Jesus' death was once and for all for our sins. I would highly recommend to any of you who are curious about this stuff, especially the connection of Old to New Testament, to take a look in the Hebrews, but that's a whole nother story. What about Jesus understanding the pain that we go through? Right, so Jesus and his experience of pain. That's what we're going to be looking at here now. Um, so where we're going to turn to is the book of John. Um, do any of you guys have John 11.35 memorized? Because if you don't, um, it's really easy to memorize. It's the shortest verse of the Bible, and it's only two words. So here I am flipping. I don't need to flip to it because I have it memorized. And, of course, I could have just used a bookmark anyways, but... John eleven thirty five says, as simple as this, Jesus wept. So why was Jesus crying? It's an important question. Um, Jesus crying because his friend Lazarus was sick for a long time and ended up dying. And that's really interesting. The God man, <clears throat> Jesus, went through some of the deepest pain that any of us go through, which is the loss of a loved one. So we can think of that as we almost certainly will have to deal with the loss of a loved one if we haven't already. Um, Jesus went through it. We, we definitely can go to him with that, that pain in some of our darkest times of mourning. Jesus went through it himself. Um, how about the pain that Jesus went through in the events leading up to the cross as well as on the cross? Think about his betrayal. The betrayal by Judas, that is. Um, so Jesus had thousands of people following him. He had over 70 disciples at some point, but he did have 12 particularly close disciples, right? The 12 disciples. And one of these was Judas. Now, Judas was one that ate with Jesus frequently, was there talking with him, I'm sure, often listening to what he had to say, and he betrayed Jesus. Um, I cannot imagine, honestly, I, I don't really have too many people that I have spent three years with consecutively and been that close to. And I, I can't imagine the pain that it must feel to have been betrayed by somebody that they had shared so much with, somebody so close. And I think uh, you know, betrayal is something that we will all encounter at some point. And that's yet another thing that, that Jesus can relate to us in. Um, leading up to the cross, Jesus was beaten. He was mocked. His beard was pulled out. Now, I think that's something that you guys can't relate to. Um, I can't. I hardly can grow any facial hair, but I know you guys can't. So, um, in that sense, Jesus actually has his beat. Um, none of us can get our beards pulled out. But, sorry, that's just a, a slight bit of humor here for this video. But, he was mocked. Not only was Jesus mocked, and we know it hurts to be mocked. I think all of us have been mocked at some point. But Jesus was being mocked by the very people that 
he loved, he created, right? Jesus being God loved loves everybody and and formed them in their mother's womb. And these very people are mocking him. Not only are they mocking him, but they are mocking him for claiming to be exactly what he is, God, and they're calling him a liar and mocking him for that. So there are actually multiple layers of pain right there in the mocking. In our times of being bullied, Jesus understands what we go through. Um, now, this next point, I'm going to be careful because I'm walking on eggshells a bit here. I don't want to blaspheme, but upon Jesus' death, the Father turned away. Now, I'm not really even going to make a claim, a statement on what that really means, but what I do know is that must have been a lonely time for Jesus, right? The Father and the Son being together through eternity and at the moment of Jesus' death, there had there was some sort of separation there. Um, and that's as far as actually I'm gonna go. Um, maybe somebody more qualified than myself can elaborate further on that point, but that's not really super important for <laughs> this teaching here. But the point is, even in our time of loneliness, which is, at least for me, some of the most pain that I go through, you know, Jesus went through loneliness and probably at a deeper level. So as I wrap up here, I'd like to leave you guys with uh, a bit of a benediction. So we're going to go to, uh, let's see here, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. And I just want this to be um, some comfort for you guys as we think of, um, you know, we're talking about pain that we go through, temptation we go through. But this is my benediction here. I'll turn it over to my friend to read this, and then um, we're going to wrap it up. All right, take it away, buddy. Second Corinthians 1, 3 to 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. So I hope these words um, here in 2 Corinthians are a bit of encouragement and comfort um, as well as just a good guide. Uh, it talks about, you know, coming together, standing strong through pain and suffering um, as we can stand strong with Jesus, looking to Jesus, um, but especially with our life groups, um, just chasing after Christ. And with that, I'm going to... Uh, pray real quick and then we're going to break up into times of discussion here but i'm going to pray quick lord i thank you for this time um i thank you for the students of west shore um, i pray that in this time that they would be comforted in this time of uncertainty especially in lord i just pray that this time would be a chance for us to maybe not be distracted by so much lord and just focus on you in jesus name amen all right, guys, thanks for dealing with me through this awkward screen that's between you and I and actually uh, days between me filming this and you guys receiving this. But I hope it wasn't too awkward for the uh, excuse me. This wasn't too awkward for you guys. And I hope it was at least a little bit entertaining. All right, guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for joining me tonight. It was really a blast. I'll see you guys next week. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get back to my reading. <laughs>